Okay, so welcome to another episode of Just One Point. This is our first video podcast. This is Marco. This is George. Mark. And today we're going to be doing something that I've been interested in trying for a long time. Uh, we're going to try the same beer out of one, two, three, four, five, six different glasses. So we're going to start with our Shaker Pint. We have the Spiegelau Pilsner glass, Spiegelau Hefeweizen, Spiegelau Tulip, Spiegelau IPA glass, and the Sam Adams Ultimate Pint glass. Um, so if you guys, you guys can go ahead and start with a shaker, and I'll just kind of introduce everything. Um, so for those of you guys who don't know, um, Spiegelau designed these four glasses with the idea of focusing the aroma and the characteristics for each different type of beer. Um, I've always been kind of curious how they compare to each other um, for the same beer, uh, as well as this uh, Sam Adams Ultimate Pine Class. And we're going to use the, uh, the traditional shaker um, as a kind of calibration, um, because that's kind of what most everybody drinks out of. So let me, actually, I'm going to take off my glasses too. So um, today we're drinking the uh, Lagunita Pilsner, which is one that um, we've never tried. Yeah. Have you tried it before? Yeah, I just you, had it the other day. Yeah, just the other day. Uh, it's, uh, I've been drinking it for the past couple days since it came on top. Okay, <laughs> so we all have different levels of familiarity with it. Um, initial impressions from the shaker glass? You get a pretty nutty, mm -hmm. nutty aroma. Uh, fairly nutty uh, starting off. Um, there's a definite undertone of, a, uh, you know, of noble hops. Um, pretty standard, uh, you know, yeah, pretty standard pilsners. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting and a lot of the kind in of a very nice way. The yeast aromas from it as well, because it's quite a clean beer. Um, I was expecting it to be a little bit more hoppy, but um, they've done a pretty good job at keeping it pretty solid, kind of slightly more traditional. Um, I'm definitely getting a lot of the. Yeah. The yeast in the aroma, especially in this. In my initial impression was kind of uh, you know, very malty, very pilsnery. Um, let me see, not a lot of a um, little hoppiness, a little grassiness. Mm -hmm. um, so let's um, you know everybody, you can pick a different, you can all pick different glasses and uh, just see how it works out. So yeah, everybody, yeah. So I'll try the. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> I'm definitely, uh, compared to the American US pint shaker glass, I'm definitely getting, with this IPA glass, I'm getting, it is focusing the hop around a bit more than the shaker, and I'm getting less of the yeast in the nose. Um, I'll say this one's. Actually, I'm probably getting maybe a little bit less aroma than the shaker. Um, definitely, this is more malt centric, uh, mm -hmm. at least for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah a little, a little bit get, more if I really stick my nose in there, yeah. I get more of that like grassy Pilsner aroma from the pint glass than I do. Really? Um, well, I'm on the uh, Pils glass, so. Very similar, except just a bit more amplified. Um, it's uh, the interesting part, which I was half expecting then um, to get. It's like a, it's got that grassiness. It's like I got you know got the hop aromas. It's I uh, got the uh, nuttiness out of it. The mouthfeel is a lot more lively. It's, okay. It's uh, just that thin, uh, you know, that thin. It's the thin glass rim coming I mean, from the presentation. It uh, does play a uh, part in it as far as going ahead and dealing with a uh, really thick glass. Yeah, I mean this is also. Um Probably a little bit better quality glass, but it's also relatively thick. Um, it doesn't change the mouthfeel a whole lot. Gotcha. Yeah, this um, one's definitely going ahead and feels much more effervescent. Uh, it's a, uh, it's like with it's with this glass. Yeah, this is. Yeah, you're right. This one definitely a lot more flavor. Yeah, or a little more aroma. Sorry. The so hopper aromas are getting quite amplified for it. Okay. Those ones. Yeah, the thin glass does make a huge difference, I, I think, um, just the way it puts the flavors onto your mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, crazy. Uh, I, not even that, but yeah. 
Um, no, actually, one of the uh, notes that I got, so I got in the uh, shaker too, as far as this beer goes, was a little bit of uh, was a little bit of that uh, it's that cloviness from the uh, lager yeast. Mm. And I'm actually really surprised now that I go ahead and stick my notes in this one, where it's just like, oh yeah, I go ahead and catch that all over the place. Uh, really, the half glass. I'm finding now, that Sam Adams' glass is a little bit more tart. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, so I guess these are. I mean, relatively speaking, these two are kind of the most similar in a sense. Um, both both have uh, slightly thicker rims. I don't know if I'm, you can see. Yeah, you're right up there. Um, so we're looking at about maybe a millimeter, half a millimeter. Um, one of the things we learned in the speed up glass is if you kind of look at the glass kind of head on, you can see the color of the glass. Um, shakers are usually kind of a greenish color, greenish blue color, um, because of the impurities in the glass. Sam Adams is a little bit noticeably clearer mm -hmm. in terms of the color, so it's know. a little bit less glossier as well. Which yeah, a little bit less. Have you been doing up uh, this guy here? Um, so, if I remember correctly, for the Sam Adams at least, what they described making it is uh, better glass, a little bit thinner walls. Um, you have an obvious shape. Um, so the kind of bell tulip top is kind of to try to keep the aroma in there. Um, it also fits nicely in your hands. Though. Yeah. Quite from a, a drinker's perspective, it's quite a. It feels quite nice. Uh, yeah. Kind of tactile in your hands. It's you get a little away from the glass, which I like. Um, the speed glass are sturdy, but I, I just always feel like I'm going to break them. Yeah. Not that I'm the Hulk or anything like that, but. That's quite as bad as uh, craft beer bars glasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a place there. You would almost thinner than that if it if it could be. So, oh, yeah. a lot more of that noble hop nose uh, out of the uh, IPA glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this one too. I'm getting... really interested in uh, once you're done with that. It's like there, go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna work my way back to that. I found in tulip the tulip. I just tried it. I found it for this beer style. I found it actually quite unimpressive um, because there's not a huge amount of esters in the yeast, and I think this balloon glass shape really exaggerates kind of. Fusel or different aromatic qualities that I'd associate with yeast, like mm. which you're getting more classically in a in a Belgian beer, whereas that Pilsner yeast is quite it's distinctive but quite neutral. It's not there's not a whole load of different chemicals produced by it. So yeah, so. Um, have we all gotten, so which classes have we all gotten to? This I'm one I still think. waiting on to it. Oh, that one? Okay. So let's kind of give a... There is a... I a agree your points on the, this class though. Mm. Um, the difference between these two is like, you go ahead, there's definitely more pronounced, uh, the hopper room is definitely more pronounced. Um, I'm really impressed with how much that IPA glass makes a difference for that characteristic. Mm. It's definitely spicier from the uh, Hefeweizen glass. Mm. Um, the one thing that also the uh, Pilsner glass brought to the table that none of these did, I mean, like they all changed. Uh, oh, I see, I'm gonna try this one too. The shape, I'm curious, I think it probably has something to do with the shape of it. How it affected the it's like how it affected the nose was you know when it was subtle how it affected the mouthfeel compared to the rest of the glasses which have a all the other glasses come to more of a taper whereas this one's the most open out of the deal yeah. um, definitely goes ahead and changes the mouthfeel um, I think accent, it's accentuating it's like you know the uh, the carbonation profile for the style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a bit more rounded than the other glasses. It's, it's it's not letting stuff stand out as much. Like the IPA glass is giving you that very strong. Uh, I'm on this one, and I think I've gotten all of them. Yeah, the copper the is very. Yeah. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of bored with the. Uh, it's uh, the ultimate glass. Didn't really have bring a whole hell of a lot to the table for me. Yeah. So it was just it was a fun um, yeah. curveball to throw in. So. Let's let's start with uh we've already kind of talked a little bit so let's start with overall overall impressions between all six classes. Um, we'll, we'll assume the shaker is the control and everybody knows how that feels. So the other five, uh, I think we're in agreement about the ultimate being. Meh. It's 
Better than the shaker. He's better, 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 than, better than the shaker. Um, honestly, I would just rather it's. Uh, it didn't really go ahead and do anything for him. It, it didn't do anything better than any of the other glasses. It's. I mean, yeah. you know, for. You know, I'm pretty sure for most of us, it's like you know, for, it's like, you know, for home drinking. I think, but it's like you know, most uh, folks who are doing the whole beer geek thing are going to go for the goggle. Yeah. I'd be. In, I think this glass is going to work better with something a little bit more multi. Yeah, I think this is quite a set amount of. Uh, portfolio is from a graded, I think that's probably what they're going for. I mean, you know, it's obviously designed to kind of accentuate their beers. Um, so with the Spiegelaus, um, they all accentuated the portions of the, uh, it's, the portions of the, uh, it's, uh, start that over again. Um, they all accentuated what they were supposed to accentuate. It's with the uh, half the half is known for it's like you know, it's like known for you know clovey banana it's a uh, you know, clovey banana it's a uh, you know yeast yeast. flavors very phenolic uh, it's, yeah. yeah I I agree yeah definitely the, uh, the hops from the uh, it's like from the it's like from the IPA glass um, Pilsner glass is supposed to be for Pilsners and everything it's like in all of its uh, crassy goodness and uh, it's your it's it's like is tulips used for outside of um, I think we said um, was it you know Belgian strong ales. Um, according to their literature, basically everything, Pilsner, IPAs, whatever like that, um, the Japanese literature, what they're, what they're pushing to Japan. Gotcha. Let's just kind of carry something out. It's, uh, it's uh, like I said before, it's like, you know, the tulip glass, everyone loves the tulip glass. It's a uh, great all-rounder. I was curious if there was a, that, if that was being pushed towards something a bit more pigeonholed. Um, the lecture I heard, I remember, I thought it was kind of more Belgians, um, Belgians and strong ales, maybe some of the stouts. Maybe the higher end stouts, or higher, you know, um, imperial stouts, or you know, the you know, bourbon barrel aging and stuff like that. You know, very much similar to a goblet. Um, the J Japanese literature is pushing uh, Ichiban Shibori, which is the basic Kirin for the tulip class, which can say, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, I thought it was. Yeah, we all know that. Yeah, I, I mean, I honestly <laughs> thought it was a typo, so I had to. Um, but I mean, for this particular beer, um, which would be, I mean, what's everybody's, I mean, favorite? I'm a hophead. I mean, it's all go ahead and dump anything in the IPA glass. It's uh, going for style points. I think the Pilsner glass uh, hits it over the head. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think agree with that. Yeah. The, the Pilsner glass was the most solid. It's not making any one characteristic jump out. <clears throat> Which is what the other glasses do, yeah. Other than the Sam Adams glass. So I mean, you know, definitely I guess I'm a little guy. But I mean, between you know anything that I was actually surprised how much the hops were accentuated in the Pilsner glass. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you know all the other ones have kind of like you said, kind of a curve, right? I actually get, and maybe it's just because it's more balanced in this one, but I actually get a fair amount of hops okay. in the Pilsner glass more than I was expecting. I mean, I was expected to be more like a shaker, just all the kind of aromas bleeding off. But personally, I found that, I mean, definitely from the style, I found that the most enjoyable. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I would say the one detractor I have for the this class is what we're about to experience when it kind of gets below the, the bowl, right? You have this weird, weird shape, um, and that's just more of a design thing, but. Yeah, hops, hops. Yeah. Slightly solid, different hops. Yeah. Solid and spicy. Yeah. I think I would, for this beer, I'd put the Pilsner first and the IPA glass second. I think those two are the stronger ones for me. Um, we go on, uh, we, we, we go on a style or we go on to just a general it, just a well, experience? What it does for the beer. Either, yeah, for style, beer. yeah. Let's let's start with style, and then we can go for personal preference. Um, style, it's I would go uh, Pilsner, it's a uh, Pilsner Hefeweizen, Tulip IPA. For personal preference, I would go uh, Pilsner IPA, Tulip Hefeweizen. Okay. Catch that. <laughs> we'll come back to the personal part. Uh, to style. The style Pilsner, I'd definitely start with. Uh, and then probably uh, this is the tulip. Yeah. Tulip IPA. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh yeah, you you said um, Pilsner. 
Pilsner then on IPA. Pilsner IPA. Uh, I'll definitely go Pilsner. Um, get this up. I think I'd go Tulip, tulip IPA. Um, Hefeweizen. Um, I'd take the Tulip over the IPA actually just at this point more because of construction and uh, because of actual experience. Though I do like, I love the handle part of the IPA class. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's once beer gets it's below it, it, yeah, once beer gets below this stem, it's kind of really... Well, I think that's uh, part of, that's, that was part of the uh, design for it. Okay. Where it's, you go get that bit of slot, it's a, once you put the glass down, you get that additional agitation, mm. which is going to go ahead and get those, which can get those hop aromas. Which definitely happens with this too. I mean, now that we've gotten... It's like boot. Right. Yeah. Um, but, um, okay, so, and personal preference, what was your personal preference again? Since... Uh, personal preference uh, for this one, it's always going with the uh, Pilsner, then the IPA glass, uh, followed by its uh, tulip um, and have a great we're, we're ignoring the shaker though, right? Where do we rank the shaker? I don't think it's the worst one on the table. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think for this style of beer, the Sam Adams is probably on the bottom. Interesting. Um, the shaker's actually doing a pretty good job of giving a, a pretty rounded beer. Yeah. I, I, I don't really like the thick rim on it. Yeah. But that's that's probably the only thing letting it down actually. But the great thing about shakers, like you can drop them on concrete, they won't break. <laughs> really good. Stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Which one breaks easier? Um, <laughs> next on Mythbusters. <laughs> um, okay, personally, uh, yeah, for this style, uh, personally, um, I would probably go either IP or Tulip to start. And then Pilsner. Um, for the other two, I, for this beer, actually, I gotta say, I don't mind the Sam Adams. It doesn't do anything for the beer. Maybe a little bit more than the Shaker, but not not as much as the Spiegel glasses. But um, you know, if we're using Pilsner to stand in for you know macro brews to a degree. Um, I mean, definitely if I was at a bar, I would definitely pick the Sam Adams over the Shaker if there was a choice. Or I'd be a little bit more pleased with the experience. Maybe it's just tactile, maybe it's just um, psychological. It's a bit nicer to hold, isn't it, the Sam yeah. Adams class? It's quite user-friendly. Yeah, I mean, it may be a bit of a marketing gimmick, at least for the Pilsner, but it would show to some degree that someone actually put thought into the glasses. Mm -hmm. oh, I think there's a lot to be said uh, it's like a, for the, uh, it's like a, for the visual, tactile, yeah. and it's like it's an experience of the of nicer glassware. It's we've all gone to you know we've all gone to bars. It's like a, with like you know, your standard shakers or been to uh, places. Yeah. Um, where it's like a, it's a especially throughout the UK or it's like a, those of us not you know from the US. We go to a UK bar where they have the, your, your imperial pints. It's part of the experience. Where it's you can uh, have the uh, same drink like it's like it's gonna be nicer. It's, it's gonna be nicer drinking out of something well crafted, nicely shaped, mm. yeah. than yeah. a red solo cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I do. I, I mean, I think, except for the shaker, I think they're all exceptionally. I mean, they're all crafted well. They all handle well in their different ways. I mean, you know, this is the stem. It feels a little bit more delicate. But all, I mean, these, you know, this side of it, this side of the table, they all feel pretty. You know, they have a nice feel in the hand when you're drinking. Um, Clayton, what? Oh, yeah, yours. Your, everybody already said the personal preferences. So, um, at least for for style, I think all, overall we got to call it for the Pilsner. At least the Pilsner glass for the Pilsner style, which. Are you there? Um, Do we want to talk about the actual beer itself as well? We yeah, give it might as well, yeah. I mean, we've been focusing on the glasses, but um, I think we've been kind of peppered in tasting notes, but overall impressions on the Lagunitas Pilsner. I mean, um, especially, you know, you, you both have had it before, strictly in the shaker glass, yeah. so, you know, not trying a variety of glasses. This is my first time trying it, so. It's the Lagunitas Pilsner, it's uh, just went on here at Antenna yeah. Thursday, Wednesday? I think it went on Friday night. Thursday, maybe Thursday, right? So it would have been Thursday then. Yeah. Um, 
it's been the closest things. It's it's been the closest thing that I've had uh, to a it's like you know to a German pills since I left Germany. Okay. Um, I was yeah, it was one of those it, it was one of those beers that I wasn't expecting to be as good as it was. Um, really enjoyed the uh, noble, really enjoyed the uh, noble hops in the nose. Mm. Um, a lot of uh, really uh, great, like you know, it's, uh, you know, it's like a grass, you know, grassy, nutty, uh, straw, mm. it's a lot of straw flavors to it. Um, the mouth, it's like you know, the body of it is you know, it's nice and solid. It's a, a good mouth, it's a good malt backbone without being cloying, and the whole thing's it's the whole experience stays uh, light and a uh, you know, it's like a uh, light and crispy, like a pills should be, in mm. my opinion. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really impressed with. Um, and they haven't haven't Americanized it, you know. They haven't yeah. made it into a hot bomb. It's 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 very it's down close for it's uh, down, Lagunitas. Yeah, and it's down close to what a European style pilsner should taste like. It's very clean, easy to drink. Um, there's a fair amount of hops in there, but nothing yeah. overbearing. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I'd say it's still, you know, while I agree with all that, it's still got that kind of signature Lagunitas. Yeah. Flavor to it. There's, mm. yeah, you know, there's something about like this beer that I think is a little bit different. Mm. And I don't know. I don't want to call it's it funkiness. It's or... illegal in most states. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I mean, this is my first experience with it. I quite like it. I get to spend any time in Europe, and uh, pilsners generally, pilsners and lagers tend to be personally one of my least. It's a difficult style to do. You just yeah, don't, you have a lot of things to hide behind. Yeah. What I'd say, the best pilsner I've ever had, this comes up with it. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's been imported or that I've had that, you know. You know, nice rounded hops with a really clean body. Um, and, you know, maybe that's part of it too, is that, you know, I'm always getting pilsners in shade glasses where it does not accentuate any of the more nuanced characters. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is definitely one of the better pilsners I've had. And, um, I hope this is going to be on again in the summertime. This is going to yeah. be a, this is Japanese summer is pretty brutal. This is yeah. going to I've, slide I've down the hell out of a lot of this beer. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know the other thing too is um, it's six percent, mm -hmm. which is it does not taste Doesn't, like it at all. Yeah. It, I mean, it drinks. You know, it's only what one percent, half percent higher than what you get in macro, mm -hmm. but you know, really, really well balanced, which I don't think. Any of us expect otherwise from Lagunitas. Um, I would like a slightly lower ABV just so I could drink yeah. more of it. Yeah. Uh, um, especially when summer rolls around. Uh, I think the water is a little bit softer. I'm kind of curious uh, how that would change it as well. Big new head nuts. Big new head like it's a gas what ifs all night. Yeah. yeah, that's a whole other episode talking about water. So, um, before we uh, sign off, I, uh, I think we might do this in two parts. Do we got? Do we want to do another round with a different style of beer? Of course. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Well, this is what we call uh, a tease in the industry. So everybody, pick a glass. I think we got a. I'm gonna top uh, this one off. All right. Cheers. Cheers so much. <laughs> Everyone chose me. <laughs> yeah.